You're listening to Northwoods Church Matters, a podcast of Northwoods Church in Evansville, Indiana, where we discuss why the local church matters and things that matter to the local church. I'm your host, Matt Higgins. Hey, well, welcome back to the Northwoods Church Matters podcast. We are taking a break from our Understanding Emotions series, and we will not be emotional today. 50-50. 50-50. <laughs> I'm here with our lead pastor, Bobby Pell, and our missions pastor, Ryan Moore, and we're talking missions today, but maybe we will get a little emotional. I'm about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Which is common up here. Which is common. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk missions today, and we've got our missions offering coming up, and so we thought it would be appropriate for talk about how does missions work here at Northwoods Church and how you can get involved, and so we're going to fire away, and these very smart people are going to give you some answers. All right, so first question is, we're a Southern Baptist church, if people didn't know out there, and the Southern Baptists are typically involved with something called the cooperative program. So what is the cooperative program? It's been described as the heart of the Southern Baptist Convention, the heart of missions and ministry. It's really a cooperating effort among the SBC churches to do mission work. There's some other things that it's involved in. Partially, our, our seminaries receive some cooperative program dollars, but a vast majority of cooperative program gifts, when a church chooses to give to the cooperative program, it goes to international missions, and it goes to missions in North America. So it's really just a cooperating effort among SBC churches to kind of fuel the ministries of the SBC. I did not grow up in a Southern Baptist church, and so I grew up having, in Sunday night church services, independent Baptist missionaries coming, presenting their work, and asking for financial support. And so the cooperative program really is brilliant in that if you are one of our international missionaries, it's the reason why you do not have to raise funds. Mm -hmm. An IMB missionary, International Mission Board missionary through Southern Baptist Convention, they are fully funded because of the cooperative program. You and Ryan, I'm working on this, have a Southern Baptist education. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And that Southern Baptist education comes from and is partially funded by the cooperative program. And so... The cooperative program is the means by which Southern Baptists cooperate in how we do missions. We supposedly, as Southern Baptist churches, have a core value of cooperation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're not known for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes we're more known for we love our autonomy. I have found Southern Baptists are more independent than independent Baptist churches. Right. Uh, Okay. I mean, we'll fight you over how independent we are. Yet— we are known for how we cooperate together for the purpose of missions. We theologically agree on the big stuff. And then the two things you have to do, supposedly, to be a Southern Baptist church is you participate with cooperative program missions, and it's your choice to what degree, and you participate with the annual church profile, which is basically you give your numbers once a year. And if you theologically are in agreement, And then the other two things you do, you choose to participate cooperating in missions, and you're willing to give your numbers once a year, your Southern Baptist Church. Right. It's funny how we often hear the media talk about Southern Baptists, because they clearly have no idea how we operate. That's right. They'll be in the middle of a convention, and the media will say things like, Southern Baptists have voted to make their churches not have female pastors, or something like that. That's right. And- it doesn't work that way. That's right. Uh, it, it doesn't work that way. We are independent churches that choose to cooperate with one yeah, another. Yeah, because we're not a denomination. Right. I mean, we are a convention of churches who convene together to make decisions, and some of those churches then choose to no longer cooperate. Right. When we had the head of the International Mission Board here the other day, he didn't come in and say, Northwoods Church, you've got to do X, Y, and Z. I mean, he technically works for us. That's exactly yeah. right. And so it's a very bottom-up organizational structure. Before I get to the next question, so what are the two sending agencies that are missions agencies for Southern Baptists? So they are the International Mission Board. Dr. Paul Chitwood is the president of it. We just had him with us and the North American Mission Board. And of those two, here's the percentage of where cooperative program dollars go to those agencies. 
50.41% for the 22-23 year, 50.41% will go towards international missions, the IMB, and 22.79% will go to the North American Mission Board, which supports church planting within North America, supports send relief agencies that deals with disaster relief issues a lot of times. But by far and large, almost 75% of what you give to the cooperative program is going towards mission work, which is really phenomenal. I mean, it's yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's not going towards administration yeah, or things right. like that. 7% of everything you give on a Sunday morning goes to the cooperative program. We give 7% of the cooperative program. 4% on a Sunday morning goes to Northwoods Missions, to just like you would for our Northwoods Missions offering. Mm-hmm. And then another half of a percent goes to our local association to help its missions efforts. Yep. And so 11.5 total percent is what happens out of your check that you would give on a Sunday morning for those of you who write checks. So if God called me tonight to be a missionary to Ecuador, which he hasn't. Okay. <laughs> I was about to ask. Yeah. How does that process work? How does Southern Baptist send out missionaries? I think the first thing for you to understand is that the International Mission Board is not the sending agency of missionaries to churches. Mm -hmm. So if you came and you said, hey, Bobby, I really believe God's calling Dana and I to Timbuktu, we're the sending agency, Northwoods Churches. The International Mission Board comes alongside us, and we then call the International Mission Board, and the International Mission Board comes alongside of us. They would say, okay, well, who's the candidate? And I would say, it's Matt and Dana Higgins. They would send you an application. They would send us an application that is a reference sheet on you. And then we would present you to the IMB where you are going as our candidates. And so the International Mission Board would then look to say, okay, here are the areas we believe they are blessed with. They they can do it. We put a thumbs up check on them. And here are the areas that we believe they need to work on. It's interesting. They then send you back to us on the areas that you need to work on so we can help you as a local church to work on. So nobody has to go from church to church and raise support. And praise God for that. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's very awkward to go out begging for money from different churches. Yep. So I think you touched on this already, Bobby, but how does Northwoods Church give to missions? We have actually more than one way. One is every time you give on Sunday morning, you're giving to missions. 11.5% does that. Secondly, we've been... The first Sunday of October through now, every Sunday we have been talking about missions and the missions offering. The missions offering people can technically start giving now. There is a slip that is in the bulletin, the program, that you're able to communicate if you're going to give throughout the year through a pledge or whether or not you're going to give one time. And that missions offering is a way we give to missions. We want to strongly encourage everyone to consider to give above and beyond your offering, to missions. Missions is a big deal. So the second way that people give is to the missions offering. And then thirdly, and I didn't see this coming, but a year and a half, two years ago, there have been some individuals who have came to us and said, I'd like to give two missions above and beyond anything, and I'd like to give to this specific place. And as long as it fits the idea of making disciples, we're like, yes. And so like, if you have an area that you want to accomplish the task of missions, just come talk to us because we want to bless that. You want to talk about what's going on with Myron Kalk and his ministry? Because we haven't talked about that on Sunday, but I think it's a great example. of Yeah, that's great. So Myron has been helpful in introducing us to a group of guys In Lithuania. And what we've discovered is that in Lithuania, around where these guys live, there's not a solid evangelical church that is preaching the gospel. And so immediately when we hear that, we say, well, there should be one. And obviously Northwoods has had this history of church planting and has sought to be faithful in that. And so we encourage these guys, look, if there's not already a church there and you see that there is a need there and maybe God is calling you to plant a church there. And so Through this relationship that Myron has developed, that he has brought us alongside of, we've kind of become the sending church, the mother church, the supporting church for this new church plant in Lithuania that started out with just recognizing 
there's not a local church here and we need one. And so it's been a really fun relationship to build on and to encourage these guys. We meet with them monthly. Myron meets with them weekly, providing some theological education. So really grateful for him and his involvement in that. But it's neat. I mean, it's really cool. Yeah, it's amazing what the Lord brings our way. Bobby didn't have a dream one night and be like, a man from Lithuania <laughs> yeah, calling out to him. We weren't so, looking. <laughs> <laughs> so how much does Northwoods Church give to missions? We found this to be very encouraging. We shared these numbers at our missions conference, but it's worth sharing again. From October 1 of 2021 through the end of September of 2022, and our cooperative program dollars were 65000 almost 65700 approximately. The missions offering, the goal was 53000 and in the missions offering we brought in, at that point in time, same dates. 62,700, which is over 9,000 over the the goal. The Northwoods Missions, with 4% of our offerings that have come in, is 37,500. And different donors who have given four missions was 166,500. And when you add all of that up, you're 325,000 plus. That's amazing. Yeah. It's crazy. Is that that good compared to other churches? (laughs) Well, yeah, it's great. I mean, I sit back and think about the fact like our budget's a budget of 900,000. That's 325,000 going to missions. I mean, that's nuts. You know, when we gave those dollars, Gary Green walked up to me after the first service that he was in and he said, I think our first missions ever offering that he said, I remember was he said it was like less than two grand. Mm. And he said, look at what's happened. And I thought to myself, yeah, that's true when you compare the two. But when you think about we're at a $900,000 annual budget and over a third would be going towards missions, if you would, Mm -hmm. that's crazy. That is pretty crazy. Yeah. Awesome. What sort of missions activities does Northwoods support? Lots of church planting. We support several church planters within the state of Indiana. We support a church planter in Wyoming. We support a couple of church planters in Puerto Rico. We support work in Ecuador. We just had a team come back from Ecuador last week, and they had a lot of great gospel conversations and ministry there. We are in in the beginning stages of a partnership with Ireland, with a couple of churches in Ireland. We just mentioned the Lithuanian church plant that we're involved with. Separate from those, we are having regular conversations with some IMB missionaries about what other doors might God be opening for us to be involved in. And, I mean, really, it is not an uncommon thing up here from week to week for us to just sit back and say, God is opening another door. I mean, where is this conversation going to lead? And Mm. so, I mean, it is really an exciting time. We've given monies for the purpose. In South America, we've given monies through the International Mission Board for the purpose of raising up missionaries in South America and Central America that they would leave Central and South America and go to the rest of the world in places that it's hard for people that look like us to go. I think that's really important for people to hear. I mean, like in 2025, they're talking about just in what, what a little more than two years from now, that 50% of the mission's force will no longer be from the United States. I think that that's really important. We have a hand in that. We are financial investors in seeing that that happens, which I think is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. One of the connections that we have is the couple from Cuba mm-hmm. that we met on the mission field in Ecuador, which were affiliated with. IMB that's right. that went from Cuba that's right. to Ecuador to plant a church. That's right. That's right. Pretty neat stuff. Yeah, it is. So can you share about some of the mission trips that Northwoods has taken this year? You've pretty much gone on all of them. Almost. Almost. <laughs> and was supposed to go to Ecuador. The flu <laughs> saved you from <laughs> the that flu. One. Yeah, the flu got in the way of that one. So this year, Northwoods has been to Ecuador. We've been to Wyoming, the, the church plant that we help out over there. We've been to Puerto Rico as well. Bobby has been to Ecuador separately, right, on a teaching assignment there at least once this year, right? And so we're always open to secret agent assignment. That's That's right. That's it. That's it. So 
I think those are the ones that we've been involved on. We went on an exploratory trip in May to Ireland and mm-hmm. developed some relationships that are leading to, in 2023, right, we're, I had a conversation this morning with a pastor in Ireland about trying to iron out some details for at least one, maybe two Ireland trips in 2023. Mm-hmm. And so those are the places that we've been this year that I can think of right now. And the plan is right now is that we're going to try to be involved in some level on all of the things that we did this past year, plus some more, right? One of the things that our students are doing this coming year, our junior and senior high students, is they're partnering with the IMB to go to Germany, right? And so it's just another opportunity where we're trying to engage the church as a whole and showing them, you, no matter your age, no matter the stage that you're in, you can be involved in missions in some capacity. And so I think that'll be a neat thing this year. Have you said anything about Wyoming? We helped out with a vacation Bible school in Wyoming this year. This coming year, I don't know that we will send a team like we did last year to go, right? The needs are a little different, we've determined. But the partnership is still there for the coming year. Ben Horton at the ben Home Horton, Place Church. That's right. Home Place Church. Cowboy Church. Yeah. I was Can't really, leave out the cowboy part. I, I often leave out the cowboy part. I was out of my element big time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so if I were a person that wanted to go on a mission trip here at Northwoods Church, what does the process look like? Generally, when we get a mission trip on the calendar, we will announce it to the church that there is a mission trip, for example, to Puerto Rico coming up in April of 2023. And once that goes on the calendar, it'll go on the bulletin and we'll announce to the church, hey, if you're interested in going on this trip, let us know on the Connect card. You can do that in conversation as well. But what we do after that is we do take people through an interview process, right? Because one of the things we want to determine is, are you a believer? We think that's an important thing if you're going on a mission trip that Probably you, so. you're a believer and that you're able to articulate articulate the gospel, right? Can you share the gospel? Do you currently share the gospel? And so we ask some other questions on top of those just to try to get to know the person and to gauge whether they are ready to go on a trip or not. But we don't try to make it difficult for people to go on a mission trip. This past year, we had people that had never been on mission trips before. We had two or three people go for the first time, and we celebrate that. We're glad about that. We like that. And we want that story to take place in more people's lives within our church. And so generally, we'll announce it. They can sign up. They can go through an interview with us. And then after the interview, we'll have some team meetings together to try to let them know what's going to take place on the trip, what do we need to prepare for, those kinds of things. Yeah. As much as we don't want to set a bar too high, there is a bar. Yeah. Right. And we have told people (laughs) they can't go before. That's right. It is disappointing when. People come and they have not ever shared the gospel. And we take that really as not a a situation where we're just, the answer is no and it's snap of the fingers, but it's a way for us to be able to say, let us help you. Let's utilize the gospel seminar. Let's get some training and let's go out and share. Because the goal is not no, the goal is yes. Right. And so I, I just think it's really important. Like we want people who are listening, who are part of Northwoods, to go on a mission trip. But if you want to go on a mission trip, we want to encourage you now, look for an opportunity to share the gospel and have a story to tell. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know how to share the gospel, we want to encourage you, talk to one of us. Let us help you. Talk to another believer that you know who does share the gospel. Let them help you. Go to a gospel seminar and let us help you there. But let's be gospel sharers. Mm-hmm. So say I'm not in a position to go on a mission trip or I don't feel called to go on a mission trip. How else can I support missions activities at Northwoods Church? Recently, we've created and and given out this little prayer guide outlines all of our different partnerships, most all of our different partnerships with the church. Man, (laughs) going shouldn't happen without praying kind of fuel that going, right? And so Something that everybody can do inside of the church is they can pray for missions. They can pray for our church's involvement in missions. They can pray for these missionaries that we are supporting. They can pray for unreached people groups. They can pray for Bible translations. 
There's so many different opportunities that you can pray for. There's tons of websites online that you can go to and find out unique ways and you can pray. And so we would encourage everybody to pray about missions. There's the option of giving as well, financially giving. We understand that not everybody is able to give at the same level, and we don't expect that. But we do encourage sacrificial giving inside of the church and generous giving inside of the church. And so they can participate in missions by giving financially as well. There need to be people here at the church that are not going, but that they are sending others to go out and that are supporting the families of those who are being sent out, right? All of those are ways that you can be involved in missions. I would encourage, I had a couple, a young married couple with children who last Sunday came to me and said, hey, hey, could you remind me what's the date of the missions offering? And I said, sure, yeah, it's, it's, it's next Sunday. He said, okay, good, appreciate that. And I said, what's up? He said, well, he said, we're working with our kids and they have two or three kids. And they said, our kids are giving a, a missions gift. And we've been working with them to give a missions gift. And I would just say for those who are listening, one thing about the prayer guide that you can do is you can use the prayer guide as something that you're able to read through with your kids Mm -hmm. and then encourage the kids to save nickels and dimes and dollars or whatever. And they can give even, it doesn't have to be on the 20th of November. It can be at a future date towards missions, which because what that does is it, trains the heart. And I would just encourage families to be thinking that way. And that's not for me. That's from another family in our church who's doing that. Be training hearts to think about missions because we have an opportunity to do that. There's a lot of churches that aren't doing that. Yeah. I remember when Gwen was small, we would pray with her through missionaries. Mm -hmm. And that was a neat experience that for years, I mean, Gwen would pray for Pastor Kerry and Twyla Jackson, who were planning a church up in Indianapolis. And right. even when they, through health circumstances, had to go back home, Gwen was still praying for them. So oh, that's great. she has an interesting uh, relationship with those missionaries because she prayed with them for yeah. so long. So that's great. Uh, how do you get your kids involved in missions? You introduce them to missions through the prayer mm-hmm. guide and that's things right. like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. How else can you get your kids involved in missions from a young age? Yeah. One of the things that we've done with my kids is. We homeschool our children, and so my wife does a great job on— I'm glad you said that. um, But (laughs) specifically— That was well done. Specifically, right? right? I mean, part of the curriculum is that (laughs) she reads Scripture with them. She has spiritual conversations with them. But we have a globe that, that sits by the table, and we don't do this every night, but one night before dinner, when we were getting ready to pray together, ask the blessing, we had the globe, and— I got them to spin the globe and to just stop it, to place their finger on there. I think Eden or Benjamin did it, and I don't even remember the place, but we just use that as an opportunity to pray for good. pray for that area, pray that God would make the gospel known in that area. And that is something that took, I mean, 40 seconds to do, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was very spur-of-the-moment thing, very, very quick thing, didn't take a lot of time, didn't take any preparation, but it was just a... Just an opportunity we took. And I I think as parents, we just need to have our eyes open to opportunities as they come our way like that. Yeah. And if you don't have a globe and you have kids, bring them to the map downstairs. Oh, we do have a big old map down there now. Okay. (laughs) And just ask your kids, choose a country, any country, and right in front of that map, pray Yeah. for any of those countries. Yep. Because what are you doing is you're teaching those kids. And that's huge. And they'll remember. They will remember that. Some of the Awana teachers invited me to come and share last week. And I printed off extra copies of our prayer guide, right? Because kids need to be involved in this as well. And a bunch of them took the prayer guide home. And they may be sitting on their bed stand. They may be sitting on a bookshelf or something. But we want for children to be involved in this as well. And I just think it's really important. I think encouraging families to go on mission together is huge, too. Like one of the big experiences of my life was my dad always went on mission trips with us. And so Mm -hmm. I can remember that and it was a big impact on my life. And so we wanted to do that with Gwen as well. And so Gwen's been to Ecuador with us. She's been to Wyoming with us. She's been all sorts of different places with us serving on mission. And so it's good for her to see that. And Ryan, your kids went went to Wyoming Wyoming together in a 
the van and you all survived. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The van. Oh no. Well, we made it. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> it was a messy van when we got done with it. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah. Anything else y'all want to add about missions? Yeah. The only thing I would say is we haven't been giving you information just to give you information. We really do want you to give. And sometimes in church, there's two extremes concerning giving. One is you have churches that like all they want is my money. Okay. The other extreme is they never talk about money. I don't believe Northwoods, you can say all we do is talk about money. We don't do that. Right. You come here, we don't talk about money. And right now, we're not even talking about money because it's ours. It's for us. I'm talking about giving so we can give it away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I have no problem saying, would you please be praying about what it is the Lord would have you give so that we can give it away to others to reach others for the sake of the kingdom? I have no problem making that call. So I would just really encourage you to be thinking about that, even if it's throughout the next year or what have you, because I don't want to be caught in the trap of we're not going to ask. Mm-hmm. I want to ask, what is it that the Lord would have you give? Yeah. And we don't want missions to feel like a timeshare sales That's right. type thing. Yeah. But at the same time, <laughs> missions is a big deal. And the reason why missions is a big deal is because the gospel is life. That's right. And we're called to go out and give life and share life with other people. So it is a big deal that the yep. church is doing what we're supposed to be doing. So one more closing question, and this is a really pressing question, and it's for Ryan. Uh Uh-oh. I've been asked a lot, did you make the map downstairs (laughs) in the lobby? Oh, man. I ordered it from a shop out of the Ukraine, actually. So it came shipped to us from Ukraine. I did not make the map. Ben Beelan that I did stick the map on the wall. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) How long did it take you to stick it on the wall? If it was just me, I mean, it would have been You'd still be there. I'd still be there. Ben is very handy, right? We like Ben for multiple reasons, (laughs) but I really appreciated him that day. I mean, it only took us two or three hours to put it up. We love Ben. (laughs) I don't want to take away from your glory, but I've had a lot of people that have asked, wow, Ryan built that? (laughs) Ryan did not. In his his wood shop, he's been slaving for hours (laughs) making that. He did not build that. Thank you. I appreciate everybody thinking I could do something like that. <laughs> yeah. If the staff made it be like a yardstick and some duct tape, that <laughs> yeah, would probably right. be what it looks like. Sharpies. <laughs> <laughs> we just draw a Sharpie on the wall. Uh, that's it. Missionaries here. That's it. <laughs> Well, Sunday will be a big day, and it's not going to be a normal drop your offering in the box type thing. If this is a big production because it's a big deal, yeah. and so it will be a bigger production on Sunday. So we're going to try to make it special. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the Northwoods Church Matters podcast. If you'd like to find out more about Northwoods Church, you can visit us at our website, www.northwoodschurch.org. Again, that's www.northwoodschurch.org.